Sakir Starmer, welcome to Classic FM. Thank you very much for having me on. Oh, you are so welcome. How important is classical music in the Starmer household? Really important. For me, it's been there all my life. I've, so your my, parents? My parents listened to classical music, music. I learned a number of instruments when I was a child. I went to the Guildhall School of Music as mm -hmm. a junior exhibitioner on a Saturday morning from the age of 11 through to uh, 17, 18. So it's been in my DNA all my life and still is. So um, it's a big part of, of me. Kia, tell me about your school days. Were you happy at school? I was happy at school. I was lucky enough to pass the 11 plus. It was an all boys school. It was um, enjoyable, formative for me, gave me a great platform going forward. Played rugby, not football. I didn't approve of that because <laughs> football's always been my sport. But that was a great foundation for me to go forward. Tell me about the influence of music teachers at your school. I had brilliant music teachers at school, but they're outside school as well. And then, um, aged 11, went to the Guildhall School of Music up in London. So I used to get on the train at her screen in Surrey and go all the way up to London. This was a big deal for yeah, yeah. Um, a boy from the sort of rural village of her screen. And walked into the Guildhall School of Music. This was an amazing thing for me. Um, I had got there by practicing hard um, every morning, and much to the irritation, I'm sure, of our neighbours. <laughs> um, but I'd practiced and practiced and practiced and had got into the Guildhall School and arrived at this incredible place. It was actually then the old building before it moved to the Barbican. It moved whilst I was a junior exhibitioner. And I stumbled into this world of brilliant musicians. I mean, I knew when I walked in the door for the very first time yeah, yeah. that I'd got there through practicing and here were people who were just so talented of my own age, older, and then those that were teaching me. It was incredible. Um, but I think it very quickly extinguished for me any idea that I was going to have a career in music because I could tell the difference between myself had just practiced hard and these almost naturally talented brilliant musicians but you couldn't have been shoddy because you were playing the flute the piano the recorder and the violin yes wow there was a lot of instruments and different instruments obviously and um, and enjoyed all of them but there is a world of difference in music between those like me who yeah. you know just did the hard yards and then the brilliant people who can improvise who can you know do incredible things that I couldn't do but it was it taught me more than music it obviously introduced me to music even at a greater depth um, different types of music but it also and this is why I feel so passionately that it needs to be part of our curriculum it gave me skills for life. Mm -hmm. So if I was playing in a quartet, you've got to know how to work as a team. Yes, you've got to be yes, able to yes. look up, recognise when is the right time to come in um, and take guidance if you're you know, in an orchestra from the conductor intensely, obviously, and to communicate. And so I've always felt that music is a thing to be enjoyed, fantastic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, either playing or listening. But also it teaches you life skills, which are there um, for whatever um, job you might want to go into. And that's why I passionately believe we need it back in our schools. Yes. One of the worst things, I think, that happened was the sort of, if you like, the degrading of um, art, creative arts, music in our school curriculum in state schools. I want to see that turned around so that it's a subject that is counted again. And then I think that will mean there's much more flourishing of... of, of creative subjects including music because I think it's such an incredible experience for young people but also it's part of what will uh, ensure that they have the skills they need as they go into whatever they want to do in life. Mm. You've said that listening to classical music takes you away from the strains of the day to a different place. Can you tell us more about how classical music affects you? Different emotions at different times. So sometimes it's the powerful symphonies that can be very uplifting. Mm -hmm. um, these days it's more likely to be at the end of a really hard day in Parliament. Yes. 
uh, a, a sort of quiet uh, piano sonata, but just something that removes you. I find that when I listen to classical music, you, I can have it on in the background, mm. but that mm. isn't my preferred way of listening to it. My preferred way is is to listen to it quite intensely. You're immersing uh, home, yourself. And immersing yourself. And that takes you away. There are, I think in whether when I was a busy lawyer, when I was chief prosecutor, but now particularly in politics, it's noisy, it's um, quite confrontational mm -hmm. all day long. And um, you need something to take you away from that mm -hmm. that just breaks that away. And for me, I've got two or three things. Firstly, the children. The moment I walk through the door, I'm dad. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not the leader of the Labour Party, leader of His Majesty's opposition. I'm dad. And um, they are incredible. And they uh, make sure that I'm absolutely brought down to earth as the moment I walk in. Second thing is football. I play football every week. I watch Arsenal. I'm a season ticket holder. And again, for me, we walk on the football pitch. Um, you know, <laughs> but Do you have a you kick know, about yourself? We kick about ourselves, yeah. We, we play every Sunday. But the moment I walk on, it's nobody... I play with people I've known for a long time, some from school, some from uni, some from teams I've played for over the years. Nobody really gives a stuff what you do for a living yeah. because you're immersed <laughs> in the game. And then music, classical music, the same, when I can just pull away switch off and I do think that all of us need those points of recharging in yes, our life when you can yes. get away from it otherwise it just becomes so intense that you don't I don't think you are a brilliant decision maker if you never have any sort of release valve and classical music gives me that release valve my children do and, and football certainly does what piece of music sums up the Labour Party for you Oh, for the Labour Party. I mean, I one of the pieces I've got is um, uh, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, the Choral yes. Ode to Joy. At the end. It's that um, you know, you've got the orchestra, you've got the voices, you've got this big combination. This is very sort of Labour. You're getting everybody. Beethoven's getting everybody onto the stage yes, for this. Yes. This is a big. And I talk about a national mission for the next Labour government. This is a sense of something. But it is got a sense of destiny and is um, hugely optimistic. And so for me, that's been hardwired in me for a long, long time. So um, I would go with that. There are many others yes. uh, that I could associate with the Labour Party. But it's that sense of moving forward to a better place is incredibly powerful. Thank you.